This is Brian here, first 100 hours with the E-Track. I'm almost done with the first 100 hours. And I've dug a token here. It, um, it looks to be a palm olive soap token. Good for one cake of palm olive soap free. All right, I'll see if the store will honor that. I think Walmart might throw me out on that one. I'll come back later if I find anything else. This is Brian back here, first 100 hours with the E-Track. I uh, got a ring here, it looks like. It might be silver. It was ringing up as a quarter, about 12.46. Sure looks like it could be sterling silver ring. It's a small size, probably a woman's or child's ring. Well, I'll have to uh, clean it up and I'll get it home and See if I can find a hallmark on it. I'll come back if I find anything else. This is Brian here. I'm actually relic hunting on a Civil War campsite. Um, it's been picked over pretty good, but I found my first, I'll say, old firearms relic. I'm not going to say it's from the Civil War. Um, what this is, is a shot ball and uh, it's, it's made of lead and it's for uh, a smooth bore musket or a muzzle loading shotgun. I can tell by the age of the lead that it's, it's pretty old. Um, I do know in the, in the Civil War era, of course, they had uh, shotguns for, for killing food and everything, but they also used a, uh, a weapons package called Buck and Ball. It was basically three of these sized shots and then a, a smaller sized ball in a smooth bore and it would come out kind of like a shotgun. Uh, the theory was that the main ball would provide some penetrating injury and then this, uh, this following buckshot would also uh, further uh, incapacitate or kill the, the, uh, the person. So um, definitely this is lead and it's definitely uh, formed lead into shot. Um, whether it's from the, the Civil War occupation of this site, I can't say for sure, but the patina's right and the age is right. So all right, E-Track, and as you can see, this was uh, way down in that hole. That's my arm going all the way down there, so hooray for the E-Track. I'll come back if I find anything else. This is Brian here, first 100 hours with the E-Track. We're approaching hour 100, and uh, I got permission to hunt a private residence near mine, and you can see there, very shallow, very rocky soil. We found a mercury dime. Nineteen forty-four. Come back if I find anything else. This is Brian. First one hundred hours with the E-Track. We're approaching the end of our hundred-hour Padawan training, and uh, firearms deer season is over for now. So came out to hunt, and I found a Rosie, and it is a nineteen sixty-four. So barely got in the silver, but we'll take it. I'll come back if I find anything else good. This is Brian back from the hunts. First 100 hours with the Mine Lab E-Track and I have completed 100 hours. Uh, in my last 10 hours worth of hunts I've collected $26.91 in clad. Um, some of the memorial pennies that I got were pretty shallow so they were really toasted. I'm going to have to tumble them, but I can tell the memorials. Um, I also found three bicentennial quarters, which is kind of neat. And I found two older nickels, uh, one's a 1941 and one's a 1941D. So they just missed that, that war era. Uh, as for, for tokens, I found the, uh, the Palmolive soap token. Buy one cake, get one free. And then, I don't know if this is a token, a pendant, or what. It looks like it was zinc or something else because it's pretty toasted as well. And uh, that looks like an intentional hole, not like a rust hole. Who knows what that was. Um, for military memorabilia, I found a, uh, a button, an artillery button. Um, I don't know how old it is. It's got a, a screw on back to it. Um, I would say newer than World War II. And I don't know what the E's on there for. I don't know if that's the, the company or, or what. 
but that's uh, that's definitely the insignia of uh, United States Army art artillery. And then this is a Civil War uh, musket ball. It's a smaller one. It's either a 38 or a 44. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I've got a 50 caliber muzzle loader rifle, and it's just slightly smaller than that 50 caliber. So I may be leaning towards a 44. Found some random junk. This has to be the ugliest button ever. I really hope this was on a couch or something and not someone's clothes. Um, but it's just, it's aluminum or something light and it's got some hideous fabric in there. I don't know who, who would wear that. Uh, three junk rings. This one I thought was silver. It, it rang up as silver and it was shiny like silver. But it's really light and it's, uh, it's aluminum. There's no hallmark on it. This one looks like a mood ring or something like that. Another junk ring. And this is a lead uh, a pewter ring that's broken. It's got the head of a lion on there. As for wheat pennies, I found 24 of them this time. Um, but again, five of them are pretty toasted. I can't see the dates on them. Um, those of you out there, if you have any tips, should I tumble these or I've heard uh, take a wire brush to them or something? Um, just to kind of make them presentable or look good. I've never tumbled my, my wheats before and I was uh, kind of soliciting y'all's opinion on that. Most of these are from the 40s or 50s. There's one older one, 1911, right there. The rest are just common date. And then uh, only two silvers this past 10 hours. One's a 1944P Mercury and the other is a 1964P Roosevelt. It's got some weird staining on it. This thing was shallow. This was about an inch deep. And uh, you can see on the back it's really kind of powder white. And then it's got that really dark swamp stain on the front of it. But silver is silver. We'll take it. And that concludes my first 100 hours with the Mine Lab e track. Um, I'm going to finish filling my dough tag and maybe hit the creeks for some arrowheads and then come back when it starts warming up and, and hit the metal detecting some more. Thank you all for watching.